All right. I'm going to go through step by step on making or on coding uh, a script for a Google spreadsheet. This is an email response. Um, I made a form. It submits to a spreadsheet. And this one is an absent system. My school uses something very similar that I that I made for us. Um, so it was easy to create another kind of as an example to show how it would be done. I know Google already has a uh, option to send emails on form submission. This lets you control it a bit more, uh, especially since you can use HTML to create the email and you just have more control over the output. So of course you start by clicking on tools and then script editor is what we'll need uh, and I'm going to rename it something creative I'm sure yes absent email absence email creativity is my strong suit I'm lying uh, and I think I just get rid of that yes and my grade school teachers taught me well. I'm going to put a title on my story, and by story I mean code, and I'm going to slap my name on it. That's me. And I think I start us off with, oh, I start us off, of course, uh, probably with the, well, with the most important variable, uh, actually establishing and getting the active spreadsheet, and then the one below this is going to be variable sheet, where I find the sheet in that spreadsheet, and I use uh, I get the active one. Those are the same variable names that uh, that Google was using in their examples that I found. Thinking about it. I'm explaining what I'm about to do. Get header to text. To text to send an email. Yikes. Of text, maybe? And text. Uh, so this is my function get header. And I'm going to declare a variable. Wait, I didn't write. Well, I bet I'm going to have to fix that uh, because obviously my variable should be variable header. Uh, Kurt, fix it. Wait, go back. Go fix that. I'm sure I'll fix it eventually. Maybe towards the end. I don't even know. Uh, and then I'm using get range. So with the get range function or method, well, I'm demonstrating counting. Oh, my lights just went off. I'm at work and my our classrooms have automatic motion sensored lights, which is a good idea, but can be a bit annoying. Uh, so the get range function, the first one is the the first numbers of the row. I'm saying row one. The first, the next number is the column. I'm saying column one. The number after that is how many rows I would like to, to iterate through. Obviously, just one. I'm getting a header. And the number after that is going to be the number of columns I want to iterate through. And I think I'm counting it again. Oh, I'm even going to demonstrate my counting. Look at that. Fancy. And that should have been 8, because 7 would only return up to the 6th row, uh, which I'm going to be discovering when I do debugging. And then I use get values, so I can get all of the the values of that. Ta-da! And that's going to return my values in an array function. So header, once I make it a variable, uh, but will be an array function of the values in there. So just the strings. Oh, I'm going to put a log here for debugging. If, as you can read.
and then I'm going to go ahead and return that header. All right. First step done. Now I'm thinking. Now I'm going to go ahead and get the data. So I want to find the last row because I'm going to send this out as data is, is, is submitted on the form. Uh, we'll do that using a trigger and I'm going to set that trigger up towards the end. So I variable, I really get creative here and name it last row, uh, sheet, get last row. Another method of um, sheet variable data. I'm going to use a similar setup to my header in that I'm going to get the range and then get the values. I've also made more of a universal version of this where I use last row and last column. And so I can just kind of slap it on any spreadsheet and it will work. This one I use numbers specific to it, such as that seven. Uh, which should be an eight, but it, it's specific to it because it has eight, it has seven columns, zero to seven. And, and I did that for this one because I wanted to simplify it. I assumed if you're interested in watching a video, you might be, uh, you might be less experienced, uh, like I am or was or. And so I wanted a simple program that was straightforward. And look, I'm using the word simple as a type. Uh, make simple data for the HTML email. This, ooh, make, make table. Yep. All right, so I'm making a simple HTML uh, table. I know they're not HTML tables are kind of not cool anymore. Um, I'm not sure if they ever were cool, maybe when I was in middle school. <laughs> um, however, it's... the its simplicity is is nice and it's a good way to output the info. Uh, variable table, I'm setting up a for loop here. And I'm going out to eight because again, that would be the number of columns and I want to loop through all the info or all the data. Ah, here is another thing I will need to debug. If you notice my variable table, I should have set that equal to an empty string because in my for loop, I use table equals table plus, and now I'm going to figure out uh, the correct HTML to establish my table rows and columns. But using table equals table in my for loop, the first iteration through table is equal to undefined and that would throw off my output. And here I remember that I want to establish uh, that I'm going to have arguments for this. And so I go back and write in parameters of header and data. And there we are, table row, and there's my table column, td, and header, yep, zero i. Why am I ending the row? Hopefully I figure this out. It's frustrating watching me go back through at times. I want to go back and fix this stuff right now. Oh, okay. Well, that one I did at least. And this is going to be the data. So it will be matched with the column header. <laughs> 